Hello everyone, welcome to Engineering Classes YouTube channel. In this video lecture, we shall consider develop a Python program to generate Fibonacci sequence of length n and read n from the console. So this is the task. So what we shall do is we shall divide this concept into two parts. In the first part, let me consider what the Fibonacci sequence is, how does the flowchart of the program look, look like and the heart of the program that is the logic behind the program. So we shall consider these three points in this video and in the next video what we shall do is we shall consider the actual code in Python and we'll execute it and we'll check the output. So without wasting much time, let's get into the concept of Fibonacci sequence. So what the Fibonacci sequence is? The first term of the Fibonacci sequence is always 0 and the next term is 1. So from these, uh, these two points, if I want to generate the next sequence, it is the addition of previous two terms. It is 0 plus 1. The next term is going to be 1 again. So if I want to generate the next term, I have to add only the previous two terms. That is 1 plus 1. I should get the output as 2. Similarly, if I want to generate the next sequence, I have to add the previous two terms, which are 2 and 1. I'm going to get the answer as 3. Similarly, if I want to generate the next sequence, I have to add the previous two terms, which are 3 and 2, and gives me the answer of 5. The next sequence will be the addition of 5 and 3. I would get 8 as the answer. The next term will be 8 plus 5, which is going to be 13. Similarly, if I want to generate the next term, it is the addition of 13 and 8. I'm going to get the answer as 21. And this series continues. This is what the Fibonacci sequence is. Next, we shall consider the flowchart, flowchart of the program. So uh, we'll start with the program. Then I'll ask the user uh, to enter how many terms, how many terms of Fibonacci sequence we need to generate. So that is the uh, thing uh, that will be displayed. Next, we shall make the assignment n1 equal to 0, n2 equal to 1 and count equal to 0. n1 and n2 are the first two terms of the Fibonacci sequence. Just now we have understood the first two terms will always be 0 and 1. So there is nothing to generate. So what we shall do is we'll do the assignment straight away. So the count will be made equal to 0 that we'll see it later y. Next, I'll check the condition. Whatever the user has entered, uh, the, the terms that uh, Fibonacci sequence he wants to generate, I will store it in the variable n terms. And I'll check, the, I'll check for the condition, is n terms less than or equal to 0? That means the user has entered a negative number. So in that case, if the answer is yes, I will ask the user to enter a positive number. Correct? and keep looping this until he enters a positive number. So for example, he enters a positive number, but he'll enter one. That means he wants to generate the Fibonacci sequence of one term. What is the first term? First term is always a zero. So I'll display the Fibonacci sequence is zero. No, uh, I, after this, I'm going to stop the program. If no, uh, the user has not entered a negative number, and the user has not entered uh, the Fibonacci sequence is 1. In such condition, uh, I'll consider the actual uh, generation of the Fibonacci sequence. So I'll keep it in while loop while count less than n terms. So I'll check for this condition. If count while count is less than n terms, if it is uh, true, I'm going to print n1. And after this, I'm going to have this kind of assignment. It is nth is equal to n1 plus n2, n1 is equal to n2, n2 is equal to nth, and count is equal to count plus 1. And I'll keep repeating this uh, until the condition fails. So I'll keep looping this under while loop. If the condition uh, goes false, then we are going to stop the execution. That means we have generated the Fibonacci sequence and we are going to stop the execution at this point of time. Yes, now we shall actually consider the logic behind the program. So for example, n terms, so let me write it over here, n terms is equal to 5. What does this mean? 
say for example the user has entered the number 5 means he wants to generate the Fibonacci sequence of length 5 so it is going to be tested it is going to be put is count less than n terms that is going to be checked what is count count was initially assigned to 0 so let me write these assignments so n1 was assigned to 0 n2 was assigned to 1 so these uh, these were the assignments previously we had so first we'll check is 0 less than 5 so let me check over here so let me write is 0 less than n terms the answer is obviously yes so what is going to happen print n1 what is n1 n1 is 0 so let me write it over here so 0 is going to be printed so here this is going to be the Fibonacci sequence uh, the first term is 0 that is that got printed next we are going to have nth is equal to n1 plus n2 let me write over here nth nth is equal to n1 plus n2 n1 is 0 n2 is 1 the addition I'm going to get the answer as 1 as nth next I am going to have n1 is equal to n2 what is n2 the value of n2 is 1 so that I will store it in the variable n1 after this I'm going to have n2 is equal to nth what is the value of nth so I have to refer to this and 1 gets stored so these are the latest values of nth n1 n2 as well as I have to consider count so what I'm going to have the value of count now count is equal to count plus 1 so here I will have the initial value of count was 0 0 plus 1 the answer is 1 so these are the latest values of the variables nth n1 n2 and count so next iteration what I do is uh, let me consider it over here so just let me draw a straight line yes here I'm going to consider the next iteration after this it is go not going to stop it is going to uh, it is it is going to be in the while loop and it checks is count less than n terms what is the value of count now I have to consider the present value of count which is 1 is 1 less than 5 what is the answer the answer is yes and it is going to print n1 now what is n1 I have to refer to the latest value which is 1 so let me write it over here so the next sequence is going to be printed which is 1 after this I'm going to have these assignments so wherein nth is nth is equal to n1 plus n2 what is n1 n1 is 1 what is n2 the latest value of n2 is 1 1 plus 1 which is 2 that gets assigned to nth after this I'm going to have n1 is equal to n2 the value of n2 is 1 so let me uh, assign it to n1 and similarly n2 is equal to nth the value of nth is 2 so I'll write it 2 after this I'm going to get count is equal to count plus 1 the previous value of count was 1 plus 1 which is 2 so now let me just draw another straight line so now I'm going to test the condition again I'm I'm there still there in the while loop it, it checks the condition is 2 less than 5 what is the answer yes so if it is yes what is going to happen print n1 n1 is going to be printed what is the value of n1 here we are the value of n1 is 1 so this is the Fibonacci sequence we are generating so we are still have we still have generated only three samples we'll proceed further so it checks the condition is 2 less than 5 yes it is going to print n1 after this we are going to have these kind of assignments n is equal to n1 plus n2 so which values I have to refer 1 plus 2 so I have to 1 plus 2 I have to consider these for n1 and n2 which turns out to be 3 similarly n1 is equal to n2 what is the value of n2 now which is 2 I will assign it and n2 is equal to the value of nth the latest value of nth is 3 I will assign it to n2 similarly the last thing count count is equal to count plus 1 what is the previous value of count that is 2 so 2 plus 1 
I'm going to get 3 as the answer. So what is going to happen next? So let, just let me draw another straight line and after this I'm going to test the condition again. What is the condition? Is count that is 3 less than n terms. What is the answer? Is 3 less than 5? Yes. And it is going to print n1. What is the value of n1? n1 is a 2. So 2 gets printed. So you can see we are actually generating the Fibonacci sequence. So yes, moving on further, nth, nth is equal to n1 plus n2, n1 is 2 plus 3 which is 5. Are you getting this? Next, n1 is assigned with n2, the value of n2 is 3 and n2 will get assigned the value of nth. What is the value of nth? The value of nth is 5 and 5 gets assigned to n2. In this way we are proceeding further and count is equal to count plus 1. The previous value of count is 3. So 3 plus 1, what is the answer? We are, we are getting 4. So next what we are doing is we are actually checking is 4 less than 5. So let me just draw another straight line. Yes. So now I am actually checking is 4 less than 5. What is, the, uh, what is the answer? The answer is yes. It is going to print n1. What is the value of n1? The latest value of n1 is the 3. So I am going to print 3 in the Fibonacci sequence. After this I am going to have all the assignments that is nth is equal to n1 plus n2. What is the value of n1? That is 3 and what is the value of n2? That is 5. Uh, 3 plus 5 is going to be 8 that we store it in nth. Next we'll have n1 is equal to n2. What is the value of uh, n2? n2 is 5 so let me store it in the variable n1. Similarly, n2 will get assigned with the value of nth. What is nth? That is 8. Are you getting this? Next, count is equal to count plus 1. Previous value of count was 4. 4 plus 1, I'm going to get as 5. So let me write 4 plus 1. So I'll uh, get the answer as 5. So what is going to happen next? So next we are still there on to the while loop and we are still checking the condition. What is the condition? Is is 5 less than is 5 less than 5? This is the condition that is going to be checked. The answer is no. 5 is equal to 5. The answer is no. Hence uh, it is going to be stopped. So whatever the sequence that we generated so far. So this we are calling it as the Fibonacci sequence. So why only 5 terms have been generated? Because we stored, we asked the user to enter how many terms, he said 5. So these, this is the Fibonacci sequence of length 5. Yes, this is the logic behind the program. So I have explained everything step by step. I hope you people have understood and if there are still any doubts, please let me know them onto the comment section and I am very much happy to answer those uh, doubts. So in the next video, we will actually consider the Python uh, qu code uh, for the Fibonacci sequence and we will actually uh, run the code and we will check how does the output uh, look like. Thank you so much for watching.